we are constantly bombarded with images of youthful, flawless skin. We are judged in our society on the way we look. Everyone wants to look younger. That's the holy grail, the fountain of youth. Growing old is inevitable, but looking old is optional. As a TV presenter, there's at least some level of vanity that comes with the job. And in my mid-30s, I'm the first to admit I want a young, wrinkle-free complexion. But with so many promises of turning back the clock, can you really believe what they tell you? They are quite aggressively playing on gullibility and pseudoscience. Here, I venture to the crossroads of science and vanity in a bid to derail that dreaded byproduct of ageing, wrinkles. OK, what needs work? It's time to put my skin under the microscope to see what science can do for me. All right, well, you've got some early dynamic wrinkle lines in the frown area. When you smile around the eyes, there's some early crow's feet lines there. So these sorts of things can be addressed using Botox injections. There's a little fold which can be filled using fillers. And you've got a little bit of freckling, which is mainly a, a sun damage phenomenon, and that can be addressed using chemical peels or laser treatment just to brighten the skin a little. That sounds like a lot of treatments for my face. <laughs> well, look, these are all the potential things that can be done. Often with cosmetic treatments, it's a matter of prioritising. How young would your clients be coming to you for cosmetic work? Probably the youngest people that I'd see are in their late 20s. So have I left the run too late, being 36? You've never left it too late. It's never too late. <laughs> it's never too late. There's always things that can be done to improve the skin. Well, that was a humbling experience. Personally, I'd prefer to start subtle. Most dermatologists will tell you that prescription vitamin A creams called retinoids have been scientifically proven to rejuvenate skin. But what about over-the-counter creams? As new products come to light, so do the overinflated promises. Creams to help you wage war against wrinkles and reverse the ageing clock. The latest fad? Skincare that claims to regenerate your skin's stem cells. These are the cells that line the epidermis and are considered the engine room of the skin because they're crucial to cell renewal. But do these creams actually work? Well, who better to ask than Australia's eminent stem cell expert, Professor John Rasco. John, I've come to talk to you about stem cell therapy, mm -hmm. but this is not for life-saving purposes. This is cosmetic. I understand. The first is a product claiming that stem cells from a rare Swiss apple can protect your own skin's stem cells. The claim that uh, because some Swiss apples last longer uh, in the grocer's store, uh, their stem cells are somehow magical. Here, in the product description, it's talking about Malus domestica, which is the common apple, just a standard old apple, not this rare Swiss apple. They don't even have their apples consistent. Oh, my goodness. It's not even plausible that a stem cell from an apple or a plant would have any benefit on a human uh, skin or any, anywhere else for that matter. I did insist that he take a closer look at the scientific testing. To the untrained eye, it looks like there's a lot of science. There's lots and lots of graphs here. A first-year university student, though, would be critical of these graphs. They don't have error bars. They don't have any statistics. We're not even told how many times it's working. It's certainly illogical and pseudoscience. I'd say this is on the borderline of entirely bogus. Then, of course, there's the latest craze in beauty products containing sheep's placenta. Have you heard of this? Yeah, well, I think this is the one that Victoria Beckham uh, has spent uh, a large amount of money in, uh, in ap applying to herself. The idea that somehow an extract from sheep placenta might benefit skin stem cells doesn't make any sense. And I suspect very, very strongly that none of those claims could be supported by any kind of clinical trial. It wasn't hard to predict his reaction when I showed him a product that was actually called stem cell therapy. Well, that's extraordinary. Mmm, smells like coconut, delicious. Mm. I won't apply this one uh, for fear that I'll be uh, <laughs> turned into an embryo myself. 
Medical history is being made. The ad for this product was full of misinformation. This is the look of aging skin. You'll look up to 15 years younger starting the very first day. Well, that's unbelievable. They're claiming that they're applying stem cell therapy. Introducing Dr. Louis M. Fetter, one of the top 100 cosmetic surgeons in the world. I won't risk my name or credibility for therapies or products that are not effective. Well, he's entitled to his opinion, but the idea that this lotion somehow contains stem cells has to be completely false. You can't maintain cells in a live state in a container like this. Stem cells need to be grown under extremely strict conditions and regulated uh, at a very, very high level. So there ain't no stem cells in this container, I can guarantee you that much. So the science doesn't really stack up, does it? The science clearly does not stack up. This is anti-aging science at its best. Please in fact, Professor Rasco had in his possession a formal complaint lodged last year against another company who made false advertising claims about their stem cell skin cream. They unlawfully made claims that the product had therapeutic effects. <gasps> Um, that could affect skin cells, stimulate or regenerate skin cells, reduce wrinkles. They additionally said that they failed to disclose clearly that the product contained no therapeutically active stem cells. So that's blatant false advertising. It certainly reads that way. While these over-the-counter creams fail to stand up to scientific scrutiny, targeting skin stem cells is good in theory. And that's why doctors are looking for alternatives. So we'll spin the blood and sort of get platelet-rich part of it. Here in Melbourne, doctors are using another type of cosmetic stem cell therapy, although this one's a little more invasive than a skin cream. Excellent. Debbie has signed up for a procedure called fat transfer. Now I'll just draw on your face where we're going to put the fat. Put simply, she's having fat containing her stem cells sucked from her tummy and injected into her face. I just feel the lower part of my face is just starting to sag a bit and um, it's lost volume. But you're 51, you look great for your age. Why okay. are you having this done? Um, well, I have been through some trauma um, this last few months. I like to f look on the outside, how I'm feeling on the inside. I feel still quite young on the inside. Hello, me. To extract the fat, Debbie will undergo liposuction. Local anaesthetic is applied to her stomach, so she remains awake for the entire procedure. It, it does hurt a little bit. Are you okay? Do you feel all right? Just, just lift up this a little bit more so don't... don't As a medical reporter, I've seen many operations, but liposuction is difficult to watch. Not too bad so far? That's good. Traditionally, fat transfers have been a huge disappointment because the tissue just doesn't survive well in the new location. So this is the fat that we've taken from Debbie's tummy. But Dr Chan claims he can improve the technique. The way we're making it better really is by mixing fat with platelet-rich plasma, which is a portion of the blood which is high in growth factors and helps to activate and uh, or almost like fertilise the fat and keep it in the spot you put it. So this is... Um, platelet-rich plasma, which is coagulated. It's formed a little clot. So you can see it's like jelly. All right, so this is what it looks like in the face. Yeah. Rather be asleep. Rather be asleep, OK. Platelet-rich plasma has been used to treat sporting injuries, but only recently doctors have begun using it cosmetically. I not feel too much of this. By adding this platelet-rich plasma, you get a, a better consistency of fat to inject, for example, in areas like the lips where you want a very smooth result. You can ha harvest as much as you need. You know, so you can do the whole face, and from a longevity perspective, it's great because it could last five, ten, sometimes more years. The downsides are really that you have to do a minor liposuction procedure to harvest the fat. Yeah, well. face is a bit numb. My lips. Mm. Debbie goes home to rest. Three weeks later, these are the results. There are subtle changes to her tear troughs and upper lip, but overall, I couldn't really see much difference.
Dr Chan says it will take a few months for the fat to begin regenerating. Stem cell therapy is in its infancy still, and it's something which we're developing. It's clear that cosmetic stem cell therapy has a long way to go. So what else is there? Well, the trend nowadays seems to be towards less invasive procedures. People are not interested in downtime. People don't want to be out of action for four to six weeks. People don't want scars. People don't want to have excessively high risk. Things we do. It's in the last three or four years that we've come to, I guess, talk about the injectable type facelift. You can do a lot now without scalpels. You're looking nice and smooth in the cheek to the eye transition. Botulinum toxin, or Botox, is now the most common cosmetic medical procedure in the world. Yeah, I'm happy yeah. with that. Yeah. Believe it or not, regular Botox can actually prevent wrinkles before they occur. By paralysing the muscles in the face, you can't use them anymore, so they shrink. It's called muscle atrophy. And that's what you want when you're trying to improve frown lines, worry lines, crow's feet. You want those muscles to thin and become basically little weaklings, which will stop those wrinkles that they've formed appearing from that point on. Three areas we're going to concentrate on today. The first one... Mind you, there's not much evidence of that in the medical literature, but all the dermatologists I spoke to said the evidence in the clinic is overwhelming. My frown line's here. My wrinkle's across there, I think. This is Debbie's first time getting Botox. This procedure has often come under fire from those who fear the risks. And again, you okay? Mm-hmm. I think it's because it's essentially botulinum toxin, which we know in a high dose is lethal. So that creates a negative stigma. Cosmetic doses of Botox can be as trivial as 10 to 20 units. When we compare that to doses used in conditions such as cervical spasticity, uh, cerebral palsy, it's really a small amount, 10 or 20 per cent of the dose. So it's a very safe treatment. Very good. Do you find that patients don't like to tell people they're having Botox? Yeah, I think the majority of our patients will tell us that. They don't want messages left at home or on their mobile. Many of them will not pay in a form that can be tracked by their partners or spouses. You have it because it works. You have it because it's safe. Do you practice what you preach? I don't practice what I preach because I'm quite comfortable with my appearance, but I'm eagerly, you know, I'm just as enthusiastic to help someone who doesn't have that view. Debbie is also having filler injected into her lips. Testing a little initially. It's got some local anaesthetic in it, so once that kicks in, you'll be a lot happier. It's a synthetic substance which, as the name suggests, fills out the wrinkles around her mouth. if you like. Oh, I see it. Lips certainly have a bit more volume without being overly stretched and looking silly. Now you've seen how we can mask wrinkles by freezing muscle movement or adding volume to the skin. But to achieve the ultimate skin rejuvenation, the one thing all dermatologists agree on is to target a protein in the skin called collagen. Now, collagen gives your skin its tightness, its tautness, its resistance to stretching and pulling. That tends to peak in quantity around the age of 18 to 20, starts to peter off by around 40, and then really plummets. Boosting collagen has been a strong focus in the anti-aging industry. Now, creams or face masks containing collagen are useless because the molecule is just too big to penetrate the skin barrier. One of the most effective ways of boosting collagen in the skin is laser therapy. Lasers have come a long way over the decades. These days we tend to use what's called fractionated laser therapy, which treat a portion of the skin or a fraction of the skin at a time, and this reduces the risk of side effects such as scarring and also speeds up the healing time. So it's a much safer option. A laser emits um, microscopic beams of energy into the dermis 
and as those columns of injured tissue are shed by the body, there's a reduction in pigmentation in the skin and abnormal cells, so they can be used to reduce sunspots or precancers. The procedure is quite painful, so an anaesthetic gel is applied to the face. This is a non-ablative laser. It will injure up to 50% of the skin. Now this is the irony of skin rejuvenation. You need to cause injury to trigger renewal. It relies on the skin's natural ability to heal itself once it's been wounded. The body responds to that by laying down new collagen and elastin, which are the main support structures of skin. So over time, there's thickening of the dermis, more support for the skin, and a reduction in fine lines and wrinkles. So uh, I can see she's getting a bit red. Yeah, so the redness will increase with each pass of the laser and she'll develop a little bit of swelling, particularly under the eye area and on the eyelids here. So usually with a bit of liquid makeup by day four or five, patients are fine to be out and about and back to normal activities. A cross section of the skin shows it takes about two months for collagen, shown in brown, to deposit in the skin. Jo, I'm just going to sit you up now to try and reduce the swelling, so just sit forward for me. These are untouched images before and after the laser. As these procedures become more popular, some dermatologists are concerned that cosmetic regulation is not adequate. Unfortunately, in New South Wales, one of the big problems that we have is there's no legislation regarding who can buy or use a laser for cosmetic purposes. There's a lot of beauticians, um, and we do see a lot of scarring and, and problems from people that have been treated inappropriately. Let the buyer beware. Check the credentials of your injector. Remember, you know, it's probably more important to choose your doctor than it is to choose your procedure. But if you insist on the subtle approach and use an anti-wrinkle cream, be warned of the advertising. If you're looking at creams which are labelled firming, lifting, toning, anti-ageing, they're just glorified moisturisers. They can make your skin at that particular time look its best, but they can't turn back problems. They can't improve pigmentation or wrinkling. So there you have it, some signs behind the promise of youthful looking skin. As for me, well, I'm in no rush to have a cosmetic procedure, but maybe one day I'll feel differently. Only time will tell.